What's up, guys? In a game like RuneScape, there is so many different items that you do have. As you can see, if I go through my bank, you can see there's, there's, there's a lot of stuff here. There's, there's a lot of random items to know about, and it can make a hell of a lot of confusing decisions when you are trying to upgrade your gear or trying to invest some money in a decent item to have in the game. And there's quite a lot of items that are also very appealing by the sound of them, but aren't quite worth getting early on. They're very much like a, a later game sort of investment, and yet they do sound really good early. It's just kind of like a waste of money and not a good way to spend it. So, what I'm going to do in this video is highlight a few of the items that people do end up buying early on sometimes and making a little bit of a mistake getting early on and talking about that and explaining why you should probably wait until a little bit later. These items are still all great and are worth using in the future, but getting them early on before you get other stuff and what I'll mention you should probably get before as well uh, is definitely something worth knowing about. So anyway, if you enjoy, leave a like, subscribe to the channel if you are new and let's go through these items. Okay, so this first one that we're going to talk about is to do with the laceration boots, the fleeting boots and the blast diffusion boots. These are your best in slot boots once they've been upgraded. However, I haven't even upgraded mine because technically it's kind of not worth the money it costs to do so. Yes, if you have best in slot everything else and you have plenty of money laying around, it is worth doing eventually because it will make them best in slot and you do get extra stats from it. But that is all you get from upgrading these boots. These have passive effects, which for uh, the magic ones makes your detonate charge quicker. The laceration boots let you use bladed dive with just a uh, two-handed weapon. And the fleeting boots will let you use rapid fire while you're moving as well, which is obviously good. It's, it's really good. It also um, increases the hit chance as well. So it's definitely good right this is this is a good upgrade to get but you can increase these further as you can see this is level 80 boots right so you can make these into level 90 by adding a shadow spike with uh, these boots so if we get a shadow spike from the grand exchange which is going to be around about 200 million gp 186 i'll put the actual price from the, the discord price checker on screen during editing but it's very expensive incredibly expensive and all you get out of that is a plus two range bonus and a little bit of extra armor for example, this person here I know is, is wearing them because I examined them before and these have the 14 uh, range bonus enhanced fleeting boots and 108 armor. Whereas my standard fleeting boots have 12 and 84. It's not stats that you're going to really notice the difference with. There's not a huge difference between that. It's only two range bonus. You won't notice a huge difference. So it's definitely worth holding off on upgrading these if you have other things to buy first. Anything at all. These are literally going to be like your last upgrade to get. I can't think of anything else that would come after this uh, and set unless it was like a maybe a very specific perk switch or something. There's yeah, these, these really expensive 200 mil and you only get two stats and a little bit of bonus armor. Not really worth getting early on. But plenty of people buy these early on because they think tier 90 boots. I should get tier 90 stuff right. And I mean, I haven't even done mine yet. So at the end of the day, yes, they are worth getting, but very early on, maybe just uh, work on other stuff first. Okay, this next one, I feel like a lot of you guys or a few of you guys are going to feel called out on this a little bit and I, I apologize it's not meant to come across that way. <laughs> this is just something that is very common that I see quite a lot and is definitely there's definitely things you could have done a bit better in this situation. But if you haven't done this yet or maybe you're looking at doing this, then this is going to be helpful and I will mention it. Crib Bloom Armor. Crib Bloom Armor is a great armor set. It is freaking broken as crap. And if you use Animate Dead, of course, which is where all of this comes from, it increases your damage reduction by so freaking much. For example, having a three set bonus here, you reduce your magic damage and your melee damage by a hell of a lot. Like it, it, It's crazy how much damage you take less. And obviously, you notice a big difference. This makes it incredibly appealing for a lot of people to go ahead and get this armor nice and early. However, a lot of people will buy this armor way before they get anything with their up upgraded weapons or anything like that. And in my opinion, at that point, it's not really worth doing that early on. If you are getting in this later on because you want to get through bosses a lot easier, uh, that's fine. That makes sense. That makes total sense. However, it is very, very common for me to see someone with the dual Elder Wand and Orb and they are using Crypt Bloom Armor as well. Now, Crypt Bloom Armor is incredibly expensive. I'll put it on screen for you right now so you can see just how expensive it is. Even just for the three-piece set that you can see here, you've got the Blast Fusion Boots, Cinderbane Gloves, which is the normal setup for most places, right? But a lot of people will have this and then they will have Elder Wand and, and the Elder Orb, which is fine because the Elder Wand and Elder Orb is tier 90 accuracy, right? But it is a lot less damage than getting other stuff too. That being said, it is usually always better to upgrade your weapons first because you'll do more damage in certain bosses, have a higher hit rate, and it's just going to pay off in the long run. Now, I understand the appeal of getting the Crypt Bloom early so you can just drag your way through bosses, but this does have a few downsides to it. One of them is being that a lot of people will use Crypt Bloom to face tank the boss and not really learn mechanics, which is fine in some situations as long as you are still trying to actually learn the mechanics and understand the mechanics, that's fine. 
But if you're relying on it purely to just get through the boss because you can tank all of the damage and you're not actually learning how to deal with the mechanics, you just think, yeah, it's fine, I got Crit Bloom on, then that's kind of a downside for you as well. That being said, with how expensive this is, you could have bought a lot more stuff. If you don't have, say, an Essence of Finality, if you don't have Cinderbane Gloves, if you don't have a lot of other stuff too, tier 90s, tier 92s even, then it is absolutely worth investing in that stuff first because it's going to increase your damage. If you do want to use Animate Dead and you do want to have that damage reduction to help you get through bosses, then in all honesty, Ganodermic Armor will do just, not not like as good as Crit Bloom, but it'll do freaking great. It is absolutely still a great armor set to use if you insist on using Animate Dead. You can get yourself some Ganodermic Armor on, make sure you put perks on this as well, of course, and then you can go in ahead and still use Animate Dead and still get good damage reduction, you'll be okay. You just won't spend the absolute fortune that you would spend on Crit Bloom Armor itself. So you could have tier 90 weapons, you could have maybe uh, better prayer curses or something. You could have an essence of finality. You could have all of this stuff as well as Ganodermic Armor and Animate Dead instead of just having an Elder Wand, an Elder Orb, and a Crippling Armor set. Because at the end of the day, having all these extra buffs and having still having the Animate Dead Armor set from here, it, it's it's going to be a lot better than just having a Crippling Armor set, having your damage and like damage that you're taking reduced, but not being able to really deal any damage or get through the boss quick enough. If this is going to pay off in the long run to just have it this way around but like i say at the end of the day guys if you think it's better for you to just have crypt bloom and and do it that way i'm not I'm, I'm not saying you can't you shouldn't do that or whatever at the end of the day it's your decision but this is definitely something that could be spent a lot better crypt bloom is so expensive you can definitely get a hell of a lot of upgrades from that instead of just having the armor and some pretty basic weapons all right, this next one I mentioned in the last video that I did that was similar to this, but this was quite a while ago now, and I thought, you know, this is this is the big one. This is the one a lot of people do, and it's definitely worth mentioning again. So I'll keep it quick, keep it short, and you probably already know what it is. It's the Look of the Dwarves. Now, Look of the Dwarves is a very appealing item because it's going to increase the drop rate of bosses. Holy crap, drop rate of bosses for rares by 1%. 1%. 1% is not that much, guys. It really, really isn't. If you work out the 1% change to the actual drop rate of bosses, it really doesn't change that much at all. Now, a lot of people don't realize that if you actually get a drop when you have a look of the dwarves on, it will always say the look of the dwarves shines and, and gave you a drop or whatever. It will always say it's that. However, no matter what happens, even if it doesn't actually affect it, there's no way of knowing if that 1% made any difference or not. It, there's absolutely no way of knowing. It, it, it really, really doesn't. Know, like, there's just nothing. So, look of the dwarves definitely early on it is absolutely not worth the 80 million gp that it is right now because it does only increase the drop change by one percent it really isn't a big deal and you definitely will be better off investing that money in other stuff early on however i see a lot of people getting this because they think right if i get a look at the dwarves early that means i can make more money that means i'm going to get drops a lot quicker because it increases the drop chance of bosses and and it's it's not worth it it's not worth it invest like just just get yourself extra gear for 80 million gp whether it's just cinder or something anything like that get yourself one extra kill per hour and you've got a better chance at probably increasing your drop rate than if you just get a look at the dwarves so it's just not worth it but also one other thing as well as the ring of fortune does the same thing but i will put on screen now the, the bosses that the ring of fortune does because it also affects bosses like god wars dungeon 2 as well um god wars dungeon 1 and it will increase the drop rates there too so until you've actually got a load of money uh, then this this ring of fortune is still pretty good to use for that same exact same thing and you also still get the grand exchange teleport too uh, and the miscellaneous teleport so it is definitely worth grabbing one of these these cost about one mil instead of uh the the 80 mil they cost and it, hey it works in most bosses, so you might as well bring it along. The next item we are going to talk about is the Grimoire that you get from killing Solak, or you can buy in the Grand Exchange. However, this book is a probably it's probably this did no this is the best in slot pocket slot the best in slot book that you can actually use when you get towards the end game. However, because people will quite often just say things like, "Oh, what's the best book I should buy?" and then everybody will just say, "Oh, Grimoire is the best in slot." So someone goes out, they buy the Grimoire, and then they've got the Grimoire, right? One, the Grimoire is incredibly expensive to buy and upkeep. Like, it's so, so expensive. The upkeep of this thing is ridiculously expensive. Grim Page is like 7 mil each right now, I think. Maybe even a little bit more. So, yeah, they're very, very expensive. But this is technically the best pocket slot book it is it is definitely technically the best but it's just whether it's worth using that being said until you actually get to a point in the end game where you do have like items like the staff of armadillo that it works really well with i believe it works really well on melee as well in fact range i think is still it's still worth using it's still best in slot but it the, the, the book of full it's probably still just just as good or pretty close to the grimoire i think i could be wrong again i am not this top tier no all pvma this is just knowledge that i know from playing the game and streams and all that sort of stuff but basically 
getting this early on is just not worth it because early on you're not going to get any anywhere near out as much out of it as you would if you got it later on and especially once you are knowledgeable with dps the reason being is that if you are doing low damage anyway if you're already like on a fairly low dps output you aren't going to be getting as much out of this as you possibly can because if your rotations aren't right if you're critting on the wrong abilities if you aren't using a strong solid dps rotation then your crits yes you'll be still be critting higher but you're still critting like more often and stuff but you're not using the most getting most out of your damage anyway so grimwell kind of falls off in that sense so getting this before you understand dps rotations fully is it's kind of not really, really worth it either but until you get to the place it's like having a staff of armadillo or getting to a place where you're hitting the damage cap with melee then this kind of becomes a lot better then but getting it early on you're probably better better off just looking at the normal god books and buying one of those instead for example a book of jazz it's pretty damn good and is around about 7 million g super cheap really really cheap to upkeep as well the page is like 25k each the same goes for like a book of when this is really uh, it's like 300 mil i think to buy but then getting the actual like keep, keeping the pages going is incredibly cheap and the damage that it does is really high as well there's a lot of better options even the standard god books probably before you are at a point where you want to actually be using grimoire so this is worth keeping in mind just because the grimoire is technically best in slot you don't have to invest in it and buy it out straight away. It is still something you can work on and save for later on when you actually get to a position where you know for a fact that, okay, I need this now. I've got a staff of Armadil. I want to get the most out of it. Now it's time to get Grimoire. All right, next up and the final items that we're going to talk about is the Elite Armor Sets, the Elite Tectonic and the Elite Serenic. Now, Elite Tectonic is actually kind of worth getting early on, especially if you're already planning on going for normal Tectonic because the upkeep of it is a lot cheaper. Regular Tectonic is still expensive. Elite Tectonic is repairable with the Elite uh, Tectonic repair patches and those are a hell of a lot cheaper to upkeep than the regular version. So it is going to be way more expensive to buy this, but if you can get it before getting just a normal Tectonic, you are going to save money in the long run. Just to mention that's that. That's probably okay that being said the elite serenic is a very different now i only have standard serenic because i don't really use reigns that much we are working our reigns gear and i will eventually get the elite serenic that being said it isn't really worth getting the actual elite version that early on because normal serenic is so freaking cheap anyway and repairing it and upkeeping it is incredibly cheap and and really like like we'll have a look let's have a quick check so a serenic body just the, just the regular one is 6.5 mil this this is cheaper by the way than pernix just so you know like 4.2 mil for the, the chaps and the mask is 2 mil like it's serenic scales are so cheap that the t90 armor is like dirt cheap it's ridiculous but then if you look at the elite version you are going to make a huge jump this is because the elite version doesn't use serenic scales it uses the ancient scales from ed1 so the price of this is incredibly high in comparison than the normal stuff the difference that you get isn't that big you get range bonus of 34 on the top from the rent the regular version and 500 armor then you get 36 and 526 so it's another version of the whole plus two damage bonus and then a bit of extra armor right so it's still good to get eventually but for the time being and early on it's just really not worth it like this is probably one of the last upgrades you get for range in my opinion um again it could be completely wrong on that there could be something else maybe the freaking boots fleeting boots who knows but this is still not worth getting early on but because people see the the tier 92 they think hey the tier 92 armor let's just skip tier 90 buy tier 92 i'll save up some money or maybe you guys that are buying bonds and stuff which there's not a problem with that if you want to buy bonds you buy bonds it's okay but don't waste your bond money on this when you can get the serenic which isn't that much different uh, just so you can get the tier 92 for way more price repairing the normal serenic super super cheap repairing the elite serenic each patch is seven mil like it's it's very expensive in comparison and it's definitely something to keep an eye out for however these do not degrade in elite dungeons, yes, but even if you even if you like take that into account, you're not saving any money on that because of how cheap regular Renic is. Like repairing this, is is you won't even notice the difference. It's stupid. It's stupidly like cheap to, to actually use normal Renic. So, in my opinion, buying elite Renic early on until it's like your last upgrade is definitely a waste of money and is definitely a mistake to do early on with range. So keep that in mind, and that's going to be our last one. So there we go. And there you go, that brings us to the end of this video. Hopefully it helps you guys out. If any of you looking on how to spend your money, any upgrades that you want to go for, these are some things you can avoid until later on, and hopefully you will save a bit of money from doing that. That being said, these items are all also still worth getting one day. They're just not worth getting super early on. So don't go out your way to get them, but also don't write them off completely. As like I say, they are still absolutely worth your time eventually. It's just waiting for the right time and getting other upgrades before you get these. But that being said, if you did enjoy the video, if it did help, you out then do leave a like do subscribe to the channel if you are new around here and like this sort of thing i do post fairly regular most days i would say i do post so if that's something that you'd be interested in then do get subscribed channel members your names will have been on screen at some point there is 
so freaking many of you guys so thank you all so much for the support and uh yeah I, I don't know it's crazy your names will be on screen thank you thank you everybody else thank you all so much for watching too i appreciate every single one of you and i'll catch you all in the next one see you later guys